In this video we're going to get hands-on with Windows 8 storage spaces. We'll be creating simple mirrored and parity storage spaces and simulating disk failures in each of those and going through how we would recover it from that scenario if indeed we can. If you haven't seen my first video which gives an overview of storage spaces then it might be an idea to watch that video first. Anyway, let's get right down to it. First of all, we'll open up the control panel, go to system and security and then come down to storage spaces. <coughs> now in order, you can see I've already got some storage spaces here created on my machine which we won't go into because we're going to be creating some new ones. So, on the left here, create a new pool and storage space. User account control, confirmation. <clears throat> now by default, the storage spaces will find all unformatted disks and will check them all by default to be used in the new storage pool that you're going to be creating. You can see I've got some formatted drives down here, or I should say one formatted drive. Um, you don't really want to check that because if I do I might lose my OS. <laughs> so we'll get rid of that. Okay, initially we're going to set up a simple storage space and we'll just use two of the disks. So I'll uncheck this top one. So we've got two disks and see all the disks here are different sizes. That doesn't matter to Windows storage spaces. You can use disks, different types, different colours, different sizes, no problem. Okay, so we've got two of those checked. One's 37.2 gig, one's 111 gig. Create pool. Quite a quick process, there you go. So the pool is now being created, and the first thing we see is now we're going to name our first storage space from that pool. So let's just call this if I can spell my simple storage space. I will give it S for simple as a drive letter. Now you see it's defaulted to two-way mirroring here, that's probably because I've selected two disks and it thinks I might want to do mirroring, but for this instance I don't. You can see the options there anyway, but we're going to take simple first, which is no resiliency. And again there's a little information box here which just basically tells you, as you can see it doesn't protect you from drive failures and we'll see that in a minute. I'm just going to create a very small drive here of 5 gigabytes. You see you've got some useful information there of the total pool capacity and then including resiliency will come into play if we choose mirroring or parity. So we'll just create the storage space now. Get rid of that one again. And you can see it's popped up here saying Drive S has been created. And we can confirm that we're going down into the storage pool here. And you can see I have created my storage, my simple storage space S. It's in an OK state. It's a simple one with five gigabytes. And by clicking on the physical drives there, you can see the two physical drives which make up that storage space. Now you notice there's different percentages used on those two disks. Obviously that's due in this case to the fact that they're different size disks anyway. But just you need to know that both disks are used in the simple um, storage space. There are they are in effect one disk now. Imagine them joined at the hip. Now if we go to my computer there you can see my simple storage space is now appearing as the S drive. So let's just add some data to that. If we copy a couple of movie files here, <coughs> that was quick. Right, so now we've got two movie files on our simple storage space. We'll close that down for a second. 
No, this is where I simulate losing one of those discs. So I'm going to detach the smallest of those discs, which is the um, nearly 40 gig disc, which will be the Toshiba one here. So here we go. There you go. As soon as I've disconnected that, we get a message coming down here saying there's a problem. And it's asking us to reconnect the drive. Now, okay, we've still got the other drive attached. You notice the message here now. My simple storage space, it's error, it's inaccessible. And that's proved if we go to DDA. I beg your pardon, I didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do is if I go to my computer, there you go. S has now disappeared. It's, we can't access it now from within Windows. And as I said, this is because these are now, these two physical disks are assumed to be one disk. And the only way we can access that now is hopefully to reconnect the disk. So let me just reconnect that USB disk. And we have all the green lights, it's OK, and, and there we go. If we get back onto the computer, you can see my simple storage space is there now. Let's try this. And both movies are still on the disk. Now, that is simple storage space. Now, in the real world, you, pro you if you had like an actual disk failure, then basically with a simple storage space, there's no way of getting that data back. Because the data is spanned over the two disks, um, you haven't really got any access to that data at all. And that's why, especially with a simple storage space, anything on there needs to be backed up somewhere else, as you would do, or hopefully you do do, on a single hard disk which you may have in your computer. So that's simple storage spaces. Now I'd like to go on to a scenario using mirroring. So I'm just going to pause this video and just set that up. Okay, now we're back and we're going to try and set up a mirrored storage space. So as we did previously, create a new storage pool. Three disks have appeared again. Again, we're just going to add two disks into this storage pool. Create pool. There you go. Now this time we are going to keep what it's asking, what, what, what the default is, which is a, a two-way mirror. So we're going to call this um, my mirrored space. And we don't have an M, so we'll have T for two-way mirror. There you go. Now we're going to have a size of, as we did with a simple one, of five gigabytes. Now you can see, including the resiliency, has gone up to ten. And that's simply because in a two-way mirror, every file you create is added to both of the disks. So even though you've got five gigabyte capacity to add files, you're actually using double that on the actual disks. So we can create the storage space there. Right? And there you go. My mirrored space T is created. We can check the storage pool there. Again, it confirms we're using two physical drives and it confirms it's a two way mirror. And if we bring my computer up, my mirrored space T is available. So we can click on that and let's just add our movies over there again. There you go. Right. Now this is the fun part now, so in this time we're going to disconnect the smallest of those drives again. There you go. Now, 
you can see where in the simple um, storage space it actually said inaccessible. You can see here now that because we are, we've got our two-way mirror, we have reduced resiliency and it's telling us to check the physical drive section. And we can see the drive which has a, is causing the problem. However, unlike with simple storage spaces, if we get my computer up, you can see the mirrored space is still accessible. We can still access it. Even though it's running on one of the hard disks, that's no problem. And in fact, let's copy over movie three. So we can still use it just, just as we could before. No problem with that at all. No. Let's say in this case that it's not a case of this drive has actually been disconnected. It is actually defunct. It's ruined. So how can we solve this? Well, if we go up here and go to add drives for this storage pool, we've still got this one drive that we haven't used yet. So we can say add drives. And now we have two drives now in this storage space. We can also now remove this drive because we only need two in a mirrored situation. So we can remove this is this is just logically removing it because obviously if this drive is is dead anyway. It doesn't matter, but we've removed it. And now you can see here we're getting repairing. So what that actually means is the new drive that we've added now, all the data is being copied over to that drive to make the two sides of the mirror exactly equal again. So that we end up again with two, um, two perfect copies of our data. And again, this is done in the background, so you can still access it, you can still add more files to it if you want, no problem. And then eventually, in a few seconds time hopefully, we'll get to the stage where it's 100% back to normal. 87, not far to go in there. <clears throat> and there you go. So we've got a ward. Oh no, that's really not. It's gone now. Yes, there you go. So we're all back to normal now. So we've got two copies of our data. And that was quite painless as long as we had a, another spare disk that we could add to that system we're up and running as we were before so that is a very useful thing to have the mirror in and now i'll just briefly like to go through the parity one so i'll just pause the video again and we'll go through that okay now we're ready to set up our parity storage space Create a new pool. Now we'll just temporarily uncheck the top one. Go into create pool. Now you can see parity. So let us select parity there, but this is greyed out here, so we can't do that. And the reason is we need at least three disks. In fact, it did tell you that there, but that's just to demonstrate it for you. So, we'll add another drive there. There we have now three disks. Now let's create a storage space. This time we're going to call it surprisingly enough my parity space. Oh, there's no P for parity. 
Oh, well, we'll choose S again then. We'll make it a parity. And again, we'll just make a small one, 5 gig. You see that that resiliency isn't actually double like it's mirroring to do with the way parity works. But don't ask me how that is. I couldn't tell you the details. So there we'll just create that storage space now. And there we have it. Confirmation that it's a parity storage space. Confirmation there's three physical disks in there. And again, if we get up our computer, here we are. Try this, my parity. And again, we'll copy over our two movies. Now, in the same way, I'll now sim simulate a disk failure. So I'm going to pull out the smallest of those disks, which is the top one there, the Toshiba. There you go. And again, in the same way as with mirroring, we get this reduced resiliency message, which in the same way means that we can still access it. It's still here as Drive S. And in the same way as with, with the mirroring, we can still copy things to it. So I'll copy movie three. Now, again, let's assume that disk was actually a failed disk and we want to replace it. So we can just plug it in again. And we get the same messages with mirroring saying it's repairing it. So now it's it's creating its all the information it needs to uh, for its for the parity storage space to actually work. And again, while that's going on in the background, you can still carry on and use that. Still there, look. I'll just pause that while it's repairing itself. Parity can take a bit longer, I think, than mirroring because it's a more complicated process. So I'll just pause that for a sec. And there you go, the parity space is back up and running. We can have more than three disks in, in a parity situation. Um, I don't know what the limit is, but that just shows you again the resiliency that you've got with uh, parity storage, assuming you've got enough drives to work from. So I hope this video has been helpful in just demonstrating to you how storage spaces works on Windows 8. If you've got any comments or questions, please feel free and uh, please check out my, my other videos. Thanks.